Are you considering moving to Charleston, South Carolina? Well, you should. It's a great place to live. My wife and I relocated to this area about five years ago, and we both love it here. Charleston has amazing food and restaurants, historic sites and plantations to visit, many community events throughout the year, and much more. There's always something to do in Charleston, and to me, living in Charleston is like always being on vacation. But living here also has its cons. If you're watching this video, you're probably trying to decide if Charleston would be the right place for you. As someone that has relocated here from another area, I'm going to give you my top five pros and cons of living in Charleston. Pro number one, the beaches. While there are no beaches on the Charleston Peninsula, Charleston is surrounded by barrier islands with multiple beaches nearby. That's close to about 15 minutes from downtown Charleston. To the north of Charleston, you have beaches on Sullivan's Island and Isle of Palms. And to the south, there are beaches on Folly Beach and Kiwa Island. Edisto Beach is also within driving distance of Charleston, but is a little further out. It's about 45 minutes to an hour away from Charleston, but has a state park located on the beach, and you can bring an RV and go camping right near the beach at Edisto. If you're looking for a place to bring the family, a place to surf, watch for dolphins, go fishing or crabbing, or a place to go on a walk with the dogs, there's a beach near Charleston for you. Pro number two, the history. If you love history like I do, then you're gonna love Charleston. Charleston is often referred to as a living museum, and if you've been to the historic district in downtown Charleston, you'll understand why. The city has done a great job of preserving this historic area. The Charleston Peninsula is full of homes built in the 1700s and 1800s, and some even possibly older than that, including the Pink House on Chalmers Street. Take a trip through downtown Charleston, and you'll find horse-drawn carriages, the historic city market, cobblestone streets, or ballastone streets, the French Quarter, King Street, the location where South Carolina ratified the United States Constitution at the Old Exchange Building in Provost Dungeon, and some of the oldest churches in the nation, including the St. Michael's Church, where President George Washington once worshipped while touring Charleston. You can also visit one of the many historic house museums in Charleston, including the Aiken Rett House, the Joseph Manigault House, the Nathaniel Russell House, and the Edmonston Olsen House along the Battery. If you'd like more information about visiting these homes, be sure to read my top 100 things to do in Charleston, which I will link to below. Charleston also has a vast military history and is the location of some Revolutionary War battles and Civil War battles. Some of these areas that you can visit while you're in Charleston are Fort Moultrie, which was attacked by the British Navy in 1776 during the Revolutionary War, Fort Sumter, which is the location of the first shots of the Civil War, the USS Yorktown, a World War II era aircraft carrier, and the Hunley, the first submarine in history to ever sink an enemy ship. And there's also much more. Pro number three, the water. Charleston is surrounded by water, making it a great place to live if you like to go boating, fishing, or if you just want to enjoy a nice water view. We are near the Atlantic Ocean, Charleston Harbor, multiple rivers including the Ashley River, Wando River, and Cooper River. We also have tidal creeks and the intercoastal waterway in this area. If you prefer to be on a lake, Lake Moultrie and Lake Marion are about 45 minutes to an hour away, and there are a lot of campgrounds around those lakes. All of the water near Charleston also makes Charleston a great place to live if you want to have your own waterfront property. There are also neighborhoods around Charleston with a community boat ramp and dock. A few places you can enjoy a great water view in Charleston are the Battery and White Point Garden on the tip of the Charleston Peninsula, Waterfront Park in downtown Charleston, where you will also find the Pineapple Fountain, Mount Pleasant Memorial Waterfront Park, near Fort Moultrie on Solomon's Island, and the Lighthouse Inlet Heritage Preserve on Folly Beach, where you can get a great view of the Morris Island Lighthouse. There are also many options for scenic tours and boat rentals in the area. If you'd like to be out on the water, you can also purchase a water taxi all-day pass for around $12 that will take you to four different locations in Charleston Harbor between downtown Charleston and Mount Pleasant. Pro number four, the weather. I love the mild weather in Charleston, especially during the winter. I'm originally from Montana and I don't miss the long winters and all the snow there. Charleston has average high temperatures in the winter in the 60s during the day, making it a great place to live in the winter if you like doing outdoor activities like biking, golfing, and going to the beach. Pro number five, property tax. South Carolina has one of the lowest property taxes in the nation, making it a desirable location to retire or relocate. There has also been a lot of people moving to South Carolina from other states due to our lower property tax. If you'd like to get an idea of what you'll be paying for property tax in this area if you move here, most counties have a tax estimator page on their website that you can use. I will link to the Charleston County tax estimator in the description below, but keep in mind this is just an estimate and these rates can change. If you think you'll be purchasing a home as a primary residence, you can select the 4% rate. If it will be a second home or a vacation home, select the 6% rate, and this should give you a general idea of what your property taxes will be. 
All right, those were my five biggest pros of living in Charleston. Now here's my five biggest cons of living here. Con number one, the heat and humidity. The weather was one of my pros of living in Charleston, but that is only for nine months out of the year. The heat and humidity in Charleston during the summer months is definitely my biggest con of living in this area, although it doesn't bother some people. July and August are very hot and humid, and I try to stay inside during these months. Having said that, everywhere you go in Charleston during the summer will be air conditioned. There are a lot of neighborhood subdivisions in the area with a neighborhood pool, and the summer is a great time to go swimming in Charleston. You can also go to the beach during these months, and there is usually a nice cool breeze coming from the ocean. So there's still things to do. If you'd like to do any outdoor activities, you can always go first thing in the morning or at the end of the day around sunset. So I've learned to tolerate the summer months. Con number two, hurricanes and tornadoes. I'm originally from an area not affected by hurricanes or tornadoes, and I consider the potential severe weather in Charleston to be a con. Each of the first two years that I lived in Charleston, we had a mandatory hurricane evacuation, but a lot of people did still stay in town during these evacuations. Neither one of these hurricanes hit Charleston directly, but if you move here, you will learn about the cone of uncertainty. Many times, the experts are predicting the path of the hurricane, and they think it's going to hit a certain area, but there's still a chance it will hit Charleston, then you're in the cone of uncertainty. You may need to evacuate. The first two years we lived in Charleston, my family chose to evacuate Charleston, and we visited Charlotte during these evacuations, and we made a little vacation out of it. You will not need to evacuate this far inland because a hurricane weakens pretty rapidly after it hits land. So a lot of people go to the Columbia area or other locations that aren't that far away. The last couple of years, we have not had an evacuation. The surrounding Charleston area occasionally has tornadoes as well. In 2020, an EF3 tornado hit Monk's Corner and damaged some homes. And this isn't far from Charleston. We have occasional tornado watches throughout the year and some tornado warnings as well. Also, most homes in Charleston do not have a basement to use for a shelter. Con number three, flooding. Charleston and the surrounding area is known as the low country, and it won't take you long to understand why. There are areas that flood somewhat regularly, especially when there's a heavy rain during a high tide. If you purchase a home in one of these areas, you may need to have flood insurance on that property. Flood insurance can vary in price from a few hundred dollars per year to thousands of dollars, depending on the elevation of the home and the location of the home. But most newer homes are elevated enough to make flood insurance very affordable. Con number four, alligators and insects. Another kind of living in this area are the insects and alligators here. You may be swarmed by mosquitoes during the spring and summer months, and you should consider moving to a place with a screen porch so you can still enjoy your outdoor area during this time. We also have cockroaches or palmetto bugs in the area, and sometimes they get to be gigantic. Getting your home sprayed every few months will help. You will also see alligators somewhat regularly in Charleston. They often live in the neighborhood ponds, but for the most part, they are small alligators and they stay to themselves. It is very rare for an alligator to attack a human. Con number five, sales tax. Since I originally lived in a state with no sales tax, I considered the sales tax here to be a con. Sales tax in Charleston is currently 9% with all the taxes combined, and if you eat at a restaurant, they're gonna tack on a hospitality tax at 2%, making the total sales tax 11%. I do consider the sales tax here to be a con, but it is partially due to the low property taxes. All right, those are my top five pros and cons of living in Charleston. If you'd like to see more pros and cons of living in Charleston, I will leave a link in the description below to my blog post at garrisoncharleston.com that has additional pros and cons of living here. If you notice any pros and cons that you think should have been on the list, please leave a comment below. If you're considering moving to Charleston and have any questions about purchasing a home here, please feel free to call me or text me anytime at 843-769-1836 and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about the area. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like and subscribe buttons to my channel. You will receive notifications in the future when I have a new video. Thanks for watching.